stars, broad stripes and bright stars, through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we walked, we're so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, get through, through the night, and our flag was still there. Oh, say does the star-spangled banner yet wave, o'er the land of the Good evening, and welcome to Class Night 2020. I'm Michael Woodlock, Principal at Groton Dunstable Regional High School, and I'm honored to be here virtually with you tonight to celebrate the accomplishments of the Class of 2020. I'd like to thank all of our presenters, all of our community participants, our scholarship donors, our teachers, uh, and especially I'd like to thank a small group of people, namely Stephanie DeBay, Lynette Fisher, Mary Kane, Bob Coleman and Ashley Doucette from the Groton Channel for helping us put this together tonight uh, to maintain some semblance of what our senior week would have been. Um, most importantly, I want to say welcome to the class of 2020. Welcome to your parents, your friends, extended family, and community members that are here this evening. It's my honor to begin the ceremonies this evening, as it always is. Uh, in addition to the academic recognition tonight, I'm really excited to say that, as usual, our community has come out to support our graduates. And we have uh, donations of over $200,000 in scholarships that are going out to more than 75 students. So it just that's a testament, as it usually is, uh, to the commitment of our community, to our students, and to our town, and to our future. Tonight obviously marks the beginning of the end of a long road to graduation. Uh, it's impossible to not dwell upon the fact that this isn't how it is supposed to be. Obviously, um, a virtual class night uh, was not what any of us had in mind as we uh, looked forward to um, saying goodbye and congratulating the class of 2020. Uh, so I'll try not to dwell on that tonight because although it is sad, and uh, there are a lot of disappointments associated with the end of this school year. Uh, this particular ceremony is one of celebration. Uh, so we will focus on that as much as possible tonight without dwelling on the unfortunate events that we're all living with. So with that in mind, we have quite a bit of scholarship money to give out and we have quite a few academic achievements that we'd like to note. So I will begin that tonight and our first scholarship award will be the Babcock Memorial Scholarship, and it will be presented by Groton Dunstable alum and 2019 recipient, Jess Trinfaglia. Hi, my name is Jessica Trinfaglia, and I'm a biology major at St. Anselm College. I won the Helene Morgan Babcock Scholarship last year, and I'm honored to have been asked to present this year's winners. The trustees of the Helene Morgan Babcock and Alfred Babcock Memorial Scholarship Trust are pleased to announce the five graduating seniors from the town of Dunstable who will be receiving this year's awards. As a community, we are fortunate to have this trust that has been financially awarding Dunstable seniors since 2005. The benefactor of this scholarship, Helene Morgan Babcock, was one of 17 children raised in Dunstable. Her family's home was destroyed by a fire in 1923, four years before she was born. Residents of Dunstable welcomed the family into their homes while the Morgan home was rebuilt. The gesture of community kindness was never forgotten by Helene's mother, who reminded her children to please remember the kindness of the people of Dunstable. Remembering her mother's words, Helene, upon her death, bestowed her entire estate to the town of Dunstable for scholarships to selected graduating seniors. We are proud to announce the 2020 Babcock Scholar is Joshua Booth. Joshua Booth, a graduate of Groton Dunstable Regional High School, will receive $16,000 over the course of four years. In addition, the Trust is pleased to present four one-time scholarships of $2,000 to the following graduates. Lauren Hill, Abigail Eisenclam, Amelia Drislane, and Claire Peranananda. 
Each one of these recipients demonstrated a strong work ethic, the personal and academic skills necessary to succeed in educational endeavors, and most importantly, a sense of social responsibility with demonstrated effort toward helping people in their community. Congratulations. Hi everybody, Linda Kaczynski here from Grant Community School. Thank you so much for having me. I'm here to present two scholarships in honor and memory of two very special young men that are both near and dear to Groton Community School. The first scholarship is in memory and honor of Taylor Young. We lost Taylor at the tender age of four years old, but his energy and his spark could fill the classroom. We miss his warm smile. We miss his love for children and family and his strong desire to always fill people's buckets and make them feel good. The scholarship in memory of Taylor Young goes to Chloe Ashburn. The second scholarship is in honor of Christopher Barton. Christopher Barton was a brilliant young man who had a passion for the work he did as a cancer researcher at the Brigham and Women's in Boston. He had an incredibly strong work ethic, a strong desire to make the difference in the lives of, of others. He had a love for the ocean, a definite strong opinion about good coffee, and also a special interest in physical fitness, which he practiced every day. We also want to acknowledge Dan and Alyssa, Christopher's mom and dad, who have a profound impact on education and Groton Community School here in Groton. The recipient for the Christopher Barton Award goes to Maggie Dyser. Thanks everybody and congratulations. On behalf of the Groton Women's Club members, I congratulate the class of 2020 on your extraordinary efforts, academic success, and extracurriculars. Our task in choosing the recipients of our scholarships this year was a difficult one. We received the most applications ever from some truly exceptional students. I'd like to commence with the Nathaniel C. and Margaret M. Anderson Memorial Scholarship, which is made possible due to the generosity of the Anderson children in memory of their parents who worked at the Groton School. Margaret was a member of the Groton Women's Club for many years and cared deeply about students. The family's request is that this scholarship be awarded to a student entering the field of science with the intention of pursuing a medical career. On behalf of the Anderson family, it is my privilege to present this scholarship in the amount of $2,000 to Ethan McNamara. The ability to award the Groton Women's Club scholarships, each totaling $2,000, is due to the countless hours devoted by our members. From early spring until the day preceding our green sale, held on the first Saturday of December, our members decorate wreaths, make swags, boxwood trees, and kissing balls in some very frigid temperatures. On behalf of my colleagues, it is my honor to award four Groton Women's Club scholarships to Riley Eldridge, Tomas Jezik, Sarah Kelly, and Finn McGilvery. We applaud your efforts and literally the checks are in the mail. Thank you. Hello, thank you for allowing me to make this presentation. My name is Amy Loro and I'm Jeannie Mitchell's daughter. With me today are my twins, Jonathan and Paige Loro, Jeannie's beloved grandchildren. We're extremely honored to be part of today's presentation. I'm the proud graduate of the Groton Dunstable High School's graduating class of 1999. My mom was an employee of the Groton Dunstable School District for many years. Whether she was assisting school personnel in her role as human resource director, or on the bleachers rooting on Mr. Woods and his basketball team with her cheerleading team, my mom was an extremely proud member of the Groton Dunstable community. Without further ado, it's an honor and a privilege to present the first annual Jeannie Mitchell Memorial Scholarship to a cool Shena K. Sabin. Congratulations, a cool. Hi seniors, my name is Deborah Santoro and I'm the secretary for the Groton Dunstable Arts Boosters. The GD Arts Boosters are thrilled to present two $500 scholarships to two very deserving graduating seniors. The Groton Dunstable 
The purpose of the Groton Dunstable Arts Boosters Scholarships are to celebrate the visual arts, the dramatic acting arts, and music. So we're awarding this year one scholarship to Sarah Larson, who's going to Pratt Institute of Art for Communication Design, and to Alyssa Hecht, who's going to the University of Derby in England for Technical Theatre. Thank you and congratulations! Hi, I'm Linda Arpino with the Pazaricki Arpino Realty Team of Keller Williams. And I'm joined with my business partner, Bill Pozzaricki, and thank you so much for letting us join on this special day. We're so proud of you, class of 2020, especially during these difficult times. And we're even prouder to award this scholarship, which is mainly based on community service, to Sarah Kelly. Congratulations, Sarah. <laughs> Congratulations, seniors. Hello, class of 2020. My name is Steve James, and I'm representing the Groton Pepperell Rotary Club. First of all, I'd like to thank all of the Groton Dunstable High School students, as well as staff members who volunteered for Rotary hosted events this past year, including our Hope Opioid Awareness and Education event, Groton Neighbors Spring Cleanups, Katie's Closet Clothing and Toiletry Drives, monthly Groton Community Dinners, and most recently, our Sleep in Heavenly Peace Build a Bed Day. A special thank you to the members of the High School Interact Club and their advisor, Mrs. Durst. You're doing wonderful things for the community. We appreciate your service, and we look forward to reconnecting with you this next academic year. Rotary's motto worldwide is service above self. This year, we are proud to award scholarships for volunteerism and community service to two graduating seniors who exemplify that motto. This year's recipients are Jacob Morrill, and Charlotte Legassi. Congratulations to you both. We wish you the best of luck. Hey seniors, uh, Mr. Brown here. I got my senior class shirt on. Thinking of you all, congratulations. Um, and hang in there and, and, and definitely keep in touch moving forward. Um, I have the honor of announcing the Commissioners of Trust Funds for the Town of Groton Scholarships. Um, the Commissioners of Trust Funds for the Town of Groton would like to extend their best wishes and congratulations to the class of 2020. Uh, you're living through unprecedented times and are, uh, and are learning from these experiences to become our future leaders. Uh, my first scholarship as a German World War II war bride Maria Belitsky also went through difficult times when she followed her heart and came to this country to start her family. She embraced her life here, but always remembered the beauty in the landscape of her homeland. For this reason, the Maria Belitsky Scholarship focuses on horticulture, conservation, and the environment. This year, the recipient of this $500 award is Annika Kuchel. Congratulations. In 2002, through the sale of their property, the Squanicook River Sportsman's Club donated the proceeds to the town of Groton to create the Peter Bertozzi Scholarship Fund. Peter was the founding father of this club, a local man who loved nature and sports, and most of all, the beauty of Groton. His scholarship is for future environmentalists and conservationists who will strive to save our planet. This $1,000 scholarship will be awarded to each of the 2020 recipients, Lauren Hill and Ethan McNamara. Congratulations. Tom Hartnett devoted his li adult life to service and helping people get through difficult times. After he graduated from then Groton High School, Tom joined the army and served his country. He then returned to his hometown to begin his service here. Particularly in his later years, Tom served as the town of Groton's treasurer and tax collector, and then as a member of the Board of Selectmen, along with trust commissioner, sewer commissioner, and cemetery commissioner. He also spent hours assisting elderly people at the senior center with finance and tax questions. He was always available to help to tell a story about growing up in his beloved Groton. This year, uh, the recipient of the $500 Thomas Hartnett Scholarship is Gabby Lewis. Congratulations, Gabby. Peter Toomey was a graduate of the class of 1997 from Groton Dunstable Regional High School. 
During his years at GDRHS, Peter proved himself not only a strong student and gifted athlete, but more importantly, a loyal friend to all of his classmates. Peter was always first to offer support, encouragement, and help when a classmate was struggling through difficult times. He truly was a crusader who promised to excel. A $500 scholarship from the Peter Toomey Scholarship uh, Foundation has been awarded to each of the 2020 recipients, Annika Kuchel and Ian McGuire. Congratulations. And the Frank Waters Vocational Education Scholarship is one of the trust fund's oldest funds having been written in the early 1900s. Frank Waters' intent was to assist boys and girls from Groton who wish to continue with vocational training. Today, this equates to students seeking further education up to a two-year degree. The 2020 recipients of this $6,000 scholarship are Heather DeBona, David Hendershot, Vassell Kareri, Jonathan Neeland, Cabriana Kien, Kara Peters, and Eugenio Rivera. Congratulations to all the scholarship winners. Hi, class of 2020 and families. I'm Sarah Potter, one of the guidance counselors, and I will be reading some of the scholarship awards. Custom MMIC is pleased to award a 2020 Women in Engineering Scholarship to both Abby Eisenclam and to Lena Koch. These two were part of a very impressive applicant pool of 17 women in total. Yet for both Abby and Helena, it was their personal essay which set them apart from the field. Helena, who talked about wanting to be known as an engineer who happens to be female rather than a female engineer, began finding solutions to problems at a young age and she has carried that enthusiasm forward, culminating recently in an engineering internship with Brooks Automotive. Such opportunities are atypical for high school students. Abby talked about her passion for material science and the desire to use that passion to combat excessive waste in manufacturing and packaging. Congratulations to you both, and we look forward to hearing of your success in the years ahead. Congratulations, Abby and Helena. The Andrew Butterfield Scholarship is going to Abigail Eisenclam. The trustees of Russell G. and Shirley L. Toby scholarship are extremely pleased to announce that Lauren Hill has been selected to be the recipient of the first Toby scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to a graduating Dunstable student through the generosity of Russell G and Shirley L. Toby. The scholarship is in the amount of $1,000 and is to be used for Lauren's continued education at college. Congratulations, Lauren. The Brian C. Kane Class of 1999 scholarship will be awarded to Julia Hudson. Congratulations. The John Nutting Memorial Scholarship will be awarded to Sarah Hudson. Congratulations. The Nobis Group SEM Scholarship will be awarded to Helena Cope. Congratulations. The DAR Good Citizens Award will be awarded to Audrey Gold. Congratulations. The June L. Tully Scholarship was established in 2009 in memory of June Lund Tully, who moved to Dunstable at the age of 18 after marrying George E. Tully. June and George dedicated their lives to their family, their farm, and their community. Based on academics, essays, extracurricular activities, and community service, we are pleased to present the 2020 June Tully Memorial Scholarships to Evan Beagle and Lauren Hill. Congratulations, Evan and Lauren. Groton Grange, number seven, patrons of husbandry established in 1873, exists to promote and support agriculture and community programs in the town of Groton, Massachusetts. As part of our mission of service to the community, the Grange has established a scholarship in memory of longtime Grange member, Dr. Bradbury B., known as Brad Smith. Brad and his wife, Sally Smith, were primarily responsible for resurrecting the Groton Grange in the early 2000s and working to preserve the Groton Grange Hall and making the Grange relevant in the community once again. Brad was a true family man, loving husband and devoted father. 
He was a friend to all he met, a generous and caring person who gave his time and services to many causes and organizations. Brad was a mentor, teacher, and compassionate caregiver to many throughout his career as a doctor of veterinary medicine who treated all in his care with kindness and respect. He was a fiddle player who brought joy to many as a member of the Contra Banditos. He was a lifelong learner and scholar, a modern day Renaissance man, not afraid to challenge himself and to take on new experiences. Recipients of the scholarship must demonstrate that they possess some of the characteristics that Brad exhibited throughout his life. This year's award of the Groton Grange number no. seven Bradbury B. Brad Smith Memorial Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 goes to Lauren Hill. Congratulations, Lauren. Through the generous support of the William Barn Committee and the Pepperell Veterinary Hospital, two organizations which Brad had long running associations, Groton Grange number no. seven is pleased to announce the award of second Bradbury B. Brad Smith Memorial Scholarship for 2020 and the amount of $1,000 to Lara Stekowitz. Congratulations, Lara. The Groton Area Newcomers and Friends Award goes to Maggie Geyser. Congratulations, Maggie. All right. Congratulations to the class of 2020. My name is Nancy Charbonneau, and I'm one of the guidance counselors at the high school. I've enjoyed getting to know you and your families over the last four years. I know this isn't the class day that we had expected. However, I'm very proud of the way that you've all taken this in stride over the last couple of months. I wish you the best of luck in the future. I'd like to present a few scholarships tonight. The first scholarship that I'd like to present is the John C. Madigan III Memorial Scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to a student that displays both loyalty and dedication to the GDRHS community during their tenure at the school. This year, the scholarship is awarded to Diana Mendel. Congratulations, Diana. The next scholarship that I'd like to award is the Middlesex Savings Charitable Foundation Scholarship. It's awarded to a student that has a strong academic performance, has made positive changes in their life, and is involved in the GDRS HS community. This scholarship is awarded to Anna Rimkus. Congratulations, Anna. The Murphy Insurance Agency Scholarship is awarded to a student that has taken initiative is passionate and insightful, is innovative, and holds themselves in the highest integrity. This scholarship is awarded to Ethan McNamara. Congratulations, Ethan. The next scholarship I'd like to present is the Brian Heffernan Scholarship. Brian Heffernan was a graduate of the class of 2015. During his time at GD, he grew to become an ambitious and talented computer scientist and entrepreneur. Brian passed away in March of 2019 after losing a two-year battle to cancer. Brian spread his love of technology to those around him, and this is why his family has created this scholarship so that his love of computer science can continue to inspire others. This scholarship is awarded to a student who exhibits similar qualities of Brian. During his time at GD, this student has shown ex ac academic excellence inside and outside the classroom. This student has shown a love of math and computer science and they plan on majoring in this area while in college. This scholarship is awarded to Gavin Lilly. Congratulations, Gavin. The Brian C. Kane Memorial Scholarship is awarded to a student with good academic performance and one that has an easygoing, friendly personality and works well with their peers in and out of the classroom. This scholarship is awarded to Josh McNeil. Congratulations, Josh. The GD Youth Basketball Scholarship is awarded to four students who have participated in Groton Dunstable's Youth Basketball League over their years. This scholarship is awarded to Thomas Jezik, Ethan McNamara, Lauren Hill, and Heather Carroll. Congratulations, Thomas, Ethan, Lauren, and Heather. The last scholarship that I'd like to present tonight is the Dunstable Grange number 31 scholarship. The Dunstable Grange is a community service organization that provides memorials, tree plantings, dictionaries to third grade students, 
town cleanups and scholarships, all with funds raised by their annual Grange Fair. The Dunstable Grange Scholarship is chosen based on a student's academics, a submitted essay, their extracurricular activities and community service, as well as financial need. We are pleased to offer the 2020 Dunstable Grange number 31 scholarship to Claire Perananda. Congratulations, Claire. Good evening. My name is Mark Henley, guidance counselor at Groton Dunstable Regional High School. Tonight, on behalf of the Tully family, we will be awarding one scholarship to a member of the graduating class for the annual Brett A. Tully Memorial Scholarship. As a graduate of, a graduate of Groton Dunstable Regional High School, class of 2011, Brett was known for his kindness and compassion, a caring smile, and a contagious zest for life. Brett always looked for the best in people who surrounded him and left his mark by leaving people better than he found them. In awarding this scholarship, the Tully family searched for those individuals in the class of 2020 who best exemplified these qualities of his character. Therefore, the Tully family would like to award the third annual Brett A. Tully Memorial Scholarship to Aaron West. The Friends of the Neshoba Valley Medical Center Scholarship goes to Enya Selders. The Groton Dunstable Police Patrolman Association Scholarship goes to Sydney Walsh. The Groton Police Association Scholarship goes to Chloe Ashburn. The Kathleen Peabody Scholarship Award goes to Amanda Taylor. I have two Leonard W. Quinty Memorial Scholarships to hand out this evening. The first one goes to Laura Stuckowitz. The second scholarship on behalf of the Leonard W. Quinty Memorial Scholarship goes to Gabby Lewis. Finally, this evening I have the honor of presenting the Sergeant William J. Wojtowicz Memorial Scholarship. Sergeant Wojtowicz died heroically in action in June 2011 in Afghanistan. Every year, we give this scholarship to a student who demonstrates exceptional character, compassion for others, love of life, and a sense of humor, all qualities that defined Sergeant Wojtowicz. This year's recipient goes to is Bianca Resca. My name is Heather Salemi, and I have the privilege of representing the Groton Dunstable Educators Association tonight and awarding a $1,000 scholarship. The GDEA scholarship is to help support a future teacher, a field which many of the public have increased respect for, given the challenges teachers creatively addressed over the past 10 weeks. Education is a profession which requires two degrees, undergraduate and graduate, in order to work here in Massachusetts. The greatest rewards in education are the successes that lead to all of you sitting here celebrating the culmination of the past 13 years of your learning. Guided and assisted by the, educationers, the educators you have had over your journey through the Groton Dunstable schools. I encourage each of you to shout out a thanks, not just to your gold tassel choice, but the teacher you think of when you are sounding out a word or the teacher you remember drilling multiplication tables using games and mnemonics or the teacher who encouraged you to try again when you were struggling to learn a new concept. The Groton Dunstable Educators Association congratulates Amanda Taylor. We wish you all the best in your studies to join us as an educator. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure tonight on the behalf of the Groton Dunstable Athletic Booster Club to award the nine scholarships to our student athletes. We award our scholarships based on academics, athletics, service, and we asked each applicant to write a short essay describing their most memorable sports moment. This evening, I'm awarding five 
$500 scholarships to the following students. Simon Chandler, Akul Chenikasavan, Maggie Geiser, Bronwyn Mulligan, and Claire Purananda. Congratulations to the five of you. We also award two memorial scholarships. Our first is our Peter Toomey Leadership Award. This goes to a student athlete who exhibited discipline on the field, was a great team leader, and left a great example for kids to follow in future years. And I'm so proud to announce tonight that those two awards go to Ian McGuire and Jillian Van Pelt. We also award a coach's award in memory of Brian Kane. This is for the ultimate teammate, the student you just loved having on your team in your locker room who always had fun and you just knew they always were working so hard. And tonight, congratulations go to Kat Irby and Elias Geiser. Congratulations to everyone in the class of 2020 and I hope to see you all graduation. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marissa Olson. And I'm Rachel Olson. Congratulations to the class of 2020. We have the honor of presenting the Drama Guild Scholarship. This scholarship is awarded to one student who has demonstrated growth and work both on stage and off stage. The Drama Guild Scholarship goes to Lauren Malumian. Congratulations, Lauren. On behalf of the Groton Dunstable National Art Honor Society, I would like to award this year's scholarship to Sarah Larson. She was the president of the school chapter of the National Art Honor Society, and she was also instrumental in organizing the EF trip to Europe. Congratulations, Sarah. It's my pleasure now to begin the awards portion of tonight's event. And on behalf of Superintendent Dr. Laura Chesson, it is my pleasure to present uh, the Superintendent's Award to our top achieving student for the class of 2020. And this award goes to Akul Chenakesavan. Congratulations, Akul. Um, my name is Heather Salemi, and I have had the privilege of serving as the National Honor Society Advisor since 2009. I have had the honor of advising amazing students and supporting their achievements in community leadership and service over the past 11 years. The National Honor Society requires its members maintain high levels of academic achievement, leadership, good character, and to provide volunteer services to their schools and their communities. This year, despite the closing of schools, the Groton Dunstable Honor Society has continued to serve our community through three initiatives in particular. They have sponsored a blood drive through the Red Cross program, Sleeves Up. This new online drive has a goal of motivating people to donate and still has 34 days to go, so please join us. The chapter is currently running a Grateful Hearts campaign, collecting decorated hearts to be made into swags and distributed to first responder locations, such as Emerson Hospital's blood donor department, as a thank you for their services during the COVID-19 pandemic. The members of the Honor Society have also continued to work as one-on-one -on -one tutors with students from all grade levels, using video conferencing to connect and work with students. I'm very pleased to present two awards to four senior members of the Groton Dunstable chapter of the National Honor Society. In recognition of excellence in service, we are recognizing two students. First, for organizing the tutoring program through the current expansion and shift to online support, Charlotte Lagasse. And we are pleased to recognize Clarissa Lagasse for her contribution in creating the Thankful Hearts campaign. Secondly, in recognition of superior leadership, and as the best team leadership of NHS I have had the honor of working with, we are pleased to recognize both Ian McGuire, the chapter president, and Kyle Zimmer, the chapter vice president. Um, I am now pleased to uh, introduce Ms. Kristen Olson, who will be awarding the Special Projects Awards. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I have the honor of presenting the Independent Project Awards. This year's um, recipients are, for creativity, Gavin Lilly. For self-improvement, Douglas Schwaffler. For workmanship, Annika Kuchel. For community service, Caroline McCretton. Next, please welcome Michael Hoffman, presenting Excellence in Drama. Hello, I'm Michael Hoffman, one of the advisors of the Drama Guild, and I'm here to present the Excellence in Theater Award, which goes to Alyssa Hecht, Lauren Malumian, 
and Amanda Taylor. Up next, we have Angus McDonald presenting the Excellence in Math Awards. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Angus McDonald, head of the math department. I'll be presenting the awards for math today. So for Excellence in Statistics, the award goes to Chase Herberich. For Excellence in Calculus, the award goes to Kirsten Joberg. And the award for Excellence in Mathematics over four years goes to Akul Chenikasavan. And the Society for Women in Engineering would like to present awards to Kirsten Joberg, Abigail Eisenclam, and Christina Papas. And now Jeannie Erickson will be presenting awards for physical and behavioral health. On behalf of the physical and behavioral health department, I would like to wish the class of 2020 a hearty congratulations. I will be presenting some awards. For excellence in psychology, Pedro Torres Parizio. For excellence in human development, Lily Miller. For excellence in physical education, Nicole St. Germain. For four years of excellence in physical and behavioral health, the award goes to Jared Whitby. And now for the physical and behavioral special award, I'd like to read the following. Cindy Budjewicz was a physical education teacher, coach, and athletic director in the district for many years. Her strength and positive, positive energy are still felt in the gyms and on the athletic fields today. Cindy set high standards for herself and those around her as a mentor, teacher, and citizen. She realized the importance of doing a good job to the best of your ability with tremendous passion and pride, always striving for excellence and never taking herself or life too seriously. A few words come to mind when we think of Cindy. Humble, caring, fair, dedicated, courageous. Cindy passed away after a long battle with breast cancer, but her love of teaching children still lives on in the GD family today. This special award in honor of Cindy goes to Kyle Zimmerman. And now, Nicole Pruchansky from World Languages. Hi, everyone. My name is Ms. Pruchansky. I am uh, here presenting on behalf of the World Languages Department. I have two awards that I will be presenting today. The first one is for four years of excellence in Spanish, and that goes to Claire Pernananda. Enhorabuena, congratulations. The next is for four years excellence in Latin, which goes to Murphy Pizel. Congratulations. And next up is Mr. O'Connor, who will be presenting on behalf of the uh, Fine Arts Department. Hi, I'm John O'Connor in the Fine Arts Department, presenting the Visual Arts Awards for Excellence in Design, Patrick Daly, for Excellence in Photography, Amelia Drizlane, Excellence in Studio Art, Abigail Eisenclam, and Laura Stekovitz. And finally, the four year Excellence in Art Award goes to Emily Burke. So congratulations to all of you guys. We hope you have a wonderful summer and we are going to pass it on to Mr. Tim Savoy to present the music awards. Bye bye. Hello, class of 2020. Welcome to your award ceremony. Uh, I'll be handing out or announcing the awards for music. So first up, we have Excellence in Concert Band, and those awards are going to Gabrielle Blossel and Akul Chenikasavan. Next is Excellence in Jazz Band, and that award will be going to Akul Chenikasavan. Then we have Excellence in Chorus. Those two awards are going to Taryn Emerly and Finn McGillivray. For Excellence and Chamber Choir, those two awards will be going to Sarah Kelly and Emily Miller. The following students have also made Central District's music. Those names are Josh Booth, Josh Gray, Finn McGilvray, 
Emily Miller, and Libby Ray. Then for the next level of, of state music, we have all states. The all state music award is going to Josh Booth. The American Federation of Musicians local number 173 gives out one award. It's a small trophy, which is obviously not with me. That award uh, is for a musician that has both the ability to read music, improvise music, and knows a fair amount about music theory. And that award will be going to, of course, a cool. And then finally, for the four-year award in music, which each department gives out one, so obviously it can only be one, for a student who's shown the most dedication, hard work, and has brought the most to the program, and that award will be going to Taryn Emerly. Thank you all you seniors. I, I've really enjoyed working with you over the four, last four years and I, I hope to see you again. Next up is the English department and Ms. Kelly Cook. Thank you. Hi, on behalf of the English department, I'd like to congratulate the class of 2020 and it's my privilege to give three English awards to outstanding seniors. The first goes to Marissa Nardone. The second goes to Lara Stesiewicz. And the third goes to Jesse Wang. And in addition to her English award, Jesse Wang will also receive a plaque to honor her four years of excellence in English. And next, I'd like to introduce science chair, Mr. Dan Reed. I'm Dan Reed representing the science department and I have five awards to give out tonight. Um, first is excellence in physics and that goes to Patrick Daly. Next is excellence in engineering and technology and that goes to Chad Remillard. Next, I have excellence in molecular biology and that goes to Ian McGuire. Next up, I have an Excellence in Science overall award, and we actually have two recipients this year. The first is Elias Geiser, and the second is Ari Nevetta. And finally, the four-year Excellence in Science overall award goes to Abigail Eisenclam. Congratulations. And next up is uh, Mr. Keith Woods representing Social Studies. So good evening and congratulations to the class of 2020. The Social Studies Department would like to present the following awards for academic excellence. In sociology, Maggie Dyson. In economics, Ivan Stern. In international business, Clarissa Lagasse. For excellence in student in the law, Chloe Ashburn. For excellence in contemporary issues, Annika Kuchel. Excellence in government, Ari Nevetta. And drum roll, please. Four year excellence in social studies. And I think this gentleman took every course we had to offer, Austin Drake. Now I'd like to introduce the special awards, Mr. Arena. Congratulations to the class of 2020. On behalf of the Lawrence P. Gay American Legion, Post 55, I would like to recognize the participants participants in the annual Boys and Girls State programs. The Boys State 2019 participants are Austin Drake, Tim Manugian, Patrick Sullivan, and Kyle Zimmer. The Girls State 2019 participant is Cecilia Cronin. I would also like to recognize two student athletes who are the recipients of the American Legion Sportsmanship Awards. They are Warren Hill and Timothy Stark. Congratulations to all the recipients tonight. Next, I would like to introduce Grand Dunstable Athletic Director Matt Ricard, who, who will be presenting the MIA and the Central Mass Athletic Director Awards. Thank you. Well, good evening. I'm Matt Ricard, the Director of Athletics here at Grand Dunstable. And I'd like to introduce a few award winners for you tonight. The first, the MIA Pillar Awards is for wellness. Promoting health and wellness for all students is a shared responsibility of families, schools, communities, 
and the students themselves. In that end, the wellness effort of the MIAA strives to help schools create programs and educational strategies for all constituencies on a regular basis to address any matter that might enhance or improve the well being of the student. As the president of the Grotnunsville Mind Matters Club, this individual is a perfect example of someone who helps with his fellow students' well being. This year's recipient of the Wellness Pillar Award is Simon Chandler. Community service. For student athletes, participation in interscholastic athletics is a privilege which comes with great responsibilities. Among these responsibilities is the showing respect for opportunities granted and providing service so that others can experience the same opportunities. Giving back to the community is what makes student athletes heroes in the eyes of those who look up to them. When I think about a student who is continuously giving back to his community, one person comes to mind. It's my privilege to award the MIAA Community Service Pillar Award to Ian McGuire. Leadership. Every action taken by student athletes, for better or worse, has an impact upon their peers, families, and communities. Student athletes are looked at up to for the athletic talents and share an incredible power of influence as visible figures in and out of the school setting. Therefore, athletics and related school activities provide an excellent opportunity to set positive standards and examples of leadership for teammates, friends, families, and fans. It is my privilege to present this year's MIAA Leadership Pillar Award to Carolyn Mullins. Sportsmanship. Sportsmanship needs to play a primary role in interscholastic athletics in an educational perspective. Athletic competition is an extension of the classroom and an educational activity which provides lessons difficult to teach in other environments. The need for improvement to sportsmanship in society is evident and will require a maximum effort by everyone involved in athletics. A major part of the role of education through sports is to teach student athletes to exude sportsmanship and respect for teammates, coaches, officials, opponents, and the game itself. This year's recipient of the MIAA Sportsmanship Pillar Award is Sarah Bushnell. Every year, the Central Mass Athletic Directors Association gives a male and female student from every school in Central Mass its highest award. These student athletes make incredible contributions through his or her unselfishness, loyalty, and outstanding performances on the playing surfaces. They are excellent in all areas, always give his or her best effort during practices and games, encourage others to play better, contribute to the team's success, and is well respected by coaches, teammates, and opponents. It's my privilege to award the Central Mass Athletic Directors Association Awards to Brendan Ferrari and Bianca Resca. Now I'd like to, to introduce Mr. Michael Woodlock to introduce the Global Scholar Award winners. At this time, I have the honor of presenting a few uh, very special awards before we conclude our um, festivities for the evening. Our first is the Global Scholars Award. And the Global Scholars Award is presented to students that um, bring a more global presence to our school. They could be um, students who have been here for 12, 13 years, and they could be students that are relatively new to our district. And I'm very excited to present the Global Scholars Award to two recipients this year. Our first is Per Harold Viking Gemmel, and secondly, Fong Hui Nguyen. Congratulations. Next, I'd like to present our Core Values Awards. We have four core values that we uh, try to live by, and we try to encourage these traits in our students and our faculty, uh, respect, integrity, balance, and perseverance. And there are many students who have been recognized over the course of the last three or four years um, for their core values and displaying one or more of these characteristics. And that's how we award our um, students of the month. But for our graduating class, we have selected two finalists. And so I'd like to say congratulations to Brianna Kenny and Bianca Oresca. Our last award tonight is one that we honestly don't give out every year because it's very difficult to achieve. Uh, this award is given to a senior who models perfect attendance. That means no absences, no tardies, no dismissals for the entirety of senior year. Obviously we have a 
partially abbreviated senior year, but it makes it uh, no less impressive uh, that this was accomplished. And I'd like to um, say congratulations to Andrew Miller. Excellent job. <laughs> Mrs. Erickson has been a dedicated teacher at Groton Dunstable for many years, teaching psychology, human development, service learning, and transitions. She has an impressive talent for multitasking. She serves as the peer leaders advisor and on the Global Scholars Committee, all in addition to a full teaching schedule. Four years ago, Mrs. Erickson decided to add one more thing to her plate and become the advisor to the class of 2020. We could not have asked for a more dependable, committed, or caring teacher to help us. She has worked tirelessly to plan successful events such as prom and homecoming. Her efforts to host a town-wide yard sale went truly above and beyond, and with Mrs. Erickson's expertise, the class was able to raise over $3,000. She also attended every single football game our junior year so we could sell concessions. Mrs. Erickson's hard work planning senior events was also incredible, and in the face of such difficult circumstances, she has only put in more effort to give our class a meaningful end of the year. Despite being completely capable of planning these events alone, Mrs. Erickson made sure to keep the voices of the class of 2020 in mind, and always lets the grade decide what they want. She has stepped up to do the work of two class advisors and has always done it happily. Mrs. Erickson, we cannot thank you enough for all your hard work and kindness over the past four years. The entire class of 2020 is leaving high school knowing how much you care about your students, and we will never forget your thoughtfulness. For the first time this year, a new class called Sustainable Living was run at GD. It was co-taught by Ms. Gunas and Mrs. Reed, who taught students how to live in a new, more environmentally friendly world by raising animals, growing crops, researching, and learning about best practices. They took on valuable projects to make our community more beautiful. The class also demonstrated the importance of learning to fail, since things in nature don't always go as planned, but learning to make the best of a situation can result in something even better. This lesson was especially important this year since many students were unable to complete their legacy projects as they originally planned. For a legacy project, each student researched and planned an idea to make our school a more environmentally friendly and comfortable place. However, with the closing of school in March, the projects could not be finished. Instead, the students adjusted their plans and carried out similar projects at home. Amanda Taylor has created a website showcasing the sustainable living class and this year's at-home legacy projects. We are sure these projects would be outstanding to see in person, but they can still be viewed online at gdlegacyprojects.weebly.com. Thank you, Mandy, for creating this website. The class of 2020 has decided to make a donation with our remaining funds to next year's sustainable living classes. This will provide students with the resources to create amazing things to brighten up our school and finish the work this year's classes started. We are excited to see what creative ideas everyone comes up with next year. As we conclude tonight, I'd like to once again thank all of our scholarship donors. I'd like to thank our staff. I'd like to thank all of our senior parents. And especially I'd like to thank the class of 2020 for an amazing experience. These last four years with you have been wonderful. Uh, and I truly appreciate everything that you've done. I wish it could have ended differently, uh, but we still have graduation to look forward to. So um, again, thank you all for being here tonight. As we conclude, I'm going to turn uh, this evening over to Mr. Arena for um, presentation of the gold tassels. Thank you. Thank you to the class of 2020 for being such great sports during these, these difficult times. Hopefully this will provide something special for all of you uh, during, during this very unique senior week and graduation process. But one thing that's gonna remain is our tradition here at Grant Dunstable, and that will be the presentation of the tassel. So each senior will be, will, be giving, will be given a yellow tassel with the class of 2020 emblem on it. And it is used to recognize somebody in your 13 year journey through Grant Dunstable. Although there have been many people who have helped you along the way, there's probably that one special person. It could be somebody, a teacher, it could be somebody from, from elementary school or high school or middle school, it could be anybody in the building, 
Uh, it could be somebody in your family. It could be somebody uh, that you know really well that just helped you along the way. So at this time, and this is the closing of all the cer of the ceremony. Um, please think of, think about that person and make sure that uh, when the time comes, you're able to present them the yellow tassel. Congratulations again, class of 2020. Great job.